Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and I'm recording this very late before the deadline. We've got two hours to go, but I've got to edit it yet and put it up there. So I'll race through there. I'm aware it's quite possible no one's going to actually watch this before the deadline. And maybe after the deadline they won't either. But I thought I'd put it up anyway. Because something I quite like doing is watching other FPLers. But I watch them, especially the live stream, after the event. So maybe Saturday evening or Sunday when we've had some of the scores. I like listening to their sage advice and seeing how accurate it was. Anyway, back to let's look at the leagues, the Midnight Mule FPL League. So top scorer for game week 36 was Ibatum Robert, apologies if I said the name wrong, with Ketu FC who scored a massive 140 points and that was without any chips. So their team was 48 points for Captain Wilson, 17 for S. Dupinan, 16 for Eze, 12 for Salah, 13 for Trent, 11 for Trippier, 7 for Rea and 7 for Haaland. And nothing on the bench to speak of. So that was an excellent score. Top of the league is still Jacob Eriksson with Skogsgland and IF. But he only scored 74, which is low compared to everyone else on the screen. And his lead is now just down to 10 points with two weeks to go. So this is going to be a very interesting couple of weeks potentially. So his team was Captain Isaac for 14, then Trippier got 11, Steele, Kane, Harland all got 7, Shaw got 8, Foden and Henry got 6, and on the bench, nothing. Look at that, four zeros on the bench. As for me, I'm down on the third page in 106th place with 86 points. But look, my total there, I'm only one point ahead of 107th and one point behind 105. So every slight thing does make a little difference albeit I'm near the million mark, but still, st still some fun to be had in the last two weeks. So my team was I captain Trippier for 22, so that was nice. Had Trent for 13, Salah for 12, and then Haaland and Isaac 7, De Gea, Ferdinand 6, Matoma 5. On the bench, I had the bench wrong. I had Solanke before a Kanji. Solanke got two and came on for Rashford, and a Kanji got six. So that would have actually been enough to give me a slight green arrow. As it was, I got a slight red arrow. So 86 points overall, just inside the 2 million for the game week. Overall points, 2263, but it was a small red arrow. It looks quite big there, but it was a small red arrow. It was about that big. It was really not very big. It was funny because in the last game, Newcastle went 2-0 up. And if it had stayed at that, I'd have got a very healthy green arrow because I would have got Clean sheet off Botman and Trippier, and Trippier was my captain, so that's like three clean sheets. And of course, all those points who all those players who had Wilson wouldn't have got all those extra points. Uh, but that isn't what happened. And every week, all of us could say, if only this and nearly that. So every week, I've nearly got a green arrow. <laughs> I'm nearly top, but only by I'm only a few hundred points short of top. So rank, I'm just 14 points inside of 1 million and I might be making subs this week. So um, it may be slightly worse than that by the time we reach 11 o'clock. 273 subscribers. Thank you very much for everyone who watches these and those who are subscribed and like and leave comments as well. Thank you very much. So the FPL Game Week website, they have a content creators league and Harry, FPL Harry's top of that comfortably. He got 99 points. Down in third is Ben Krellin, who a lot of us like to listen to his predictions on when games are going to be played. And Ross is in the top five. A lot of people like FPL Raptor. Nice to see him up there, although he's a long way, quite a long way behind top spots. He's probably not going to win it this season, but who knows? He might do. I'm all the way down on the second page. There I am, one position behind FPL Focal, but quite a few points behind. And then James from Planet FPL, he's just crept in now to the second page. So he may be slightly disappointed with that. Now, back in game week 34, I made eight transfers. Two of them are free, so it cost me 24 points. And I said up to the end of the season, I will see how those eight players did and if it would have been worth it or not. Now, I'm aware that some of these would have been on my bench, uh, but I'm tracing them anyway because it's only three more weeks. So rare to Edison was plus one point this week. That means Raya scored one more point. No. Edison scored one more point than Rea did. Kepa de Gea was worth plus six. Henry de Robertson didn't make a difference. Castagna de Stones minus one. Stones didn't play. Odegaard to McAllister plus one. Martinelli to Rashford minus one. Martinelli went off injured and Rashford didn't even start. Jesus to Solanke made no difference. Darwin to Isaac was worth plus seven. 
So this week, the transfers are actually 13 points better off. The players I brought in got 13 points more than the players that I got rid of. So overall, that's 31 points. So in three weeks, the players I brought in have got 31 points. It cost me 24, so they're up by seven. As for my transfers for this game week, even though I've only got a couple of hours left, I don't know for sure what I'm going to do. It does depend on who's still flagged if we get any late advice. But as things stand, Rashford's a doubt. And if he's still flagged, or I think there's a reasonable chance he's not playing, I probably will move him on because we've only got two weeks left. I'm currently thinking I might get Eze and just stick him on my bench for this week because next week he's got an all right fixture. This week it's all right, but next week it's actually quite good. And then that frees up a Man United slot, which means I'll swap Botman for sure. And then at least I've still got three Man United players. And then something I may do independent of these moves, or as well as these moves, and that is Solanke for Enchico. Now, I may make no moves whatsoever. So I'm going to show you my team as it stands now, because I really don't know. And it may well be 5 to 11 before I finally decide what I'm doing. But I will try to remember to post it on Twitter for those who like to see and especially those who like to look back after the 11 o'clock deadline and see what different people have done to captain this week i'm almost certainly going to put the old mule hat on harland even though i'm not sure he's going to be the highest scorer he may not even get two games but he might do and he's kind of a safe bet even if he only gets two points and then the vice captain hat are probably gone fernandez so he gets the wee mule bonnet as for my team, as it stands at the moment, and this may be what I actually do, I've got Harland as captain and his two mates, Stones and Akanji, at the back. And I've got Fernandez as vice captain, with the hair in goal and the injured Rashford, who's got a sick note from his mummy, but we don't know if that's going to wash or not. And then we've got Matoma and March in the middle. We've got Salah in the middle as well, with his mate Trent at the back. And then we have Trippier, who's also a bit of a doubt. So uh, I've got an hour and a bit to decide exactly what I am going to do. And on the bench, four home fixtures. If any of these came in, I'd be right with that. Forster at home to Brentford, Isaac at home to Leicester, Botman at home to Leicester, Solanke at home to Man United. And there we have it. That is my sort of plans for this week, but it's still a bit fluid. So uh, who knows what I'm going to do? I'm sure I'll do something wrong, though. Thank you very much for watching and all the best for Game Week 37.